Okay, I'll have to admit I cheated on this one and uh, it's quite interesting basically to check out the temperatures in this uh, case because as you can see the front is almost closed fully and there are no intake fans. Well, today we're going to talk about Antec DP301M which supports micro ATX motherboards and on front you can place an AIO up to 280 millimeters or three uh, 120 millimeter fans on top you have a possibility to place two 140 or two 120 and at the back you get a stock non-rgb 120 millimeter fan and you know this is kind of let's say cool to actually push this case to its limits in terms of getting lower temperatures because we do have a closed front the positive thing on this case is you have a magnetic dust filter on front, you have a magnetic dust filter on top, you have quite nice amount of space at the back for cable management, two hard drive cages, well two hard drive bays in a hard drive cage, which you can adjust and move it to the front or to the back depending on the power supply, and I even managed to place an Antec signature uh, 1000 watts platinum power supply. I know this case this configuration doesn't need that much power but i wanted to see if i could place that long uh, power supply inside and even have the caddies right here so all in all i would say quite nice small uh, case and uh, the cool thing is the leds here on front that you can adjust by clicking the button here on top so you have a possibility to adjust it as you wish and giving you well, let's say some configuration, modularity, whatever. Uh, it's just an RGB LED and you do need to connect it with your SATA power from your power supply to be able to control it to the top. When we're on the top, you have a power on button, you have a reset button, you have two USB 3.0 and you have two 3.5 millimeter jacks for your headset and for your microphone. Now, when we're talking about the configuration right here and why I stated that I cheated, I use Noctua NHU12A Chromax Black. And we all know that it cools outstandingly good. We have here seven heat pipes going towards the processor and uh, that's it. So this is the part where I cheated. I really used a strong CPU tower cooler to get lower temperatures. Now. Beneath it, we have the MD Ryzen 5 5600G and the Sapphire Radeon RX 6600. So I would say it's quite a nice budget build. Don't take into consideration the power supply. This is something out of the ordinary. You can go here with 556.50 watts and you'll be quite all right. Now the temperatures, right? We have to get to that part. So the processor, of course, with the closed tempered glass, I mean, that's kind of obvious goes up to 62 celsius degrees which is quite cool and honestly i think the front two fans that i additionally installed the front 120 millimeter fans are doing the job giving a nice intake towards the noctua and then noctua cooling the cpu inside this case then we have the graphic card which went up to 71, 72 Celsius degrees, depending on the load and stuff like that. And everything was benchmarked in AIDA 64 Extreme Benchmark, Extreme Edition, Extreme Edition System Stability Benchmark, which pushes both components uh, up to 100% load. So yeah, uh, we have, as I stated, a closed front, which if you're going with this uh, case, uh, mid-range components, quite all right do add two fans on front that's a must and i would suggest that and you don't have to worry about it and the load was 100 percent, so you can expect um i would say uh, lower temperatures if you're gaming and the components don't reach 100 percent. i mean in most games they don't uh of course you have loads of holes here on the side for cable management cable rerouting from the front to the back the only thing that is missing here is something quite nicer done for the GPU cable, but you can always manage it if you push the cable before placing the power supply uh, and the motherboard, which gives you an option to put it straight at the bottom and it goes quite nicely. 
So I would say it's a quite okay uh, case, which gives you an opportunity for a budget price, uh, giving you uh, quite solid temperatures. And even though this case isn't in the top of the line when it comes to cooling from all the Antec cases, it still does a good job if you configure it properly. So again, I'll repeat my suggestion, at least two 120 millimeter fans on front, nice cooler or an AIO you can as I said you can place 280 AIO on front which will cool the processor quite nicely mid-range components would be just all right and that's all there is to it the design is quite cool the inner part and the part around is standard for the micro ATX Antec case the front is completely different than you're used to uh, closed off but still has a nice opening here well not nice as some higher end cases from Antec but still enough to cool it down with this configuration so guys if you're on a budget and you're running uh, some mid-range components as I said this is a quite solid case uh, the only fan that you get is a 120 millimeter fan at the back so you do need to take that into consideration that I would go with two additional ones and that's all there is to it. So check out the links below if you're interested in more information and of course the price for the Antec DP301M. And finally, don't forget to subscribe, like and hit the notification bell for future content coming out shortly. Hopefully, I will see you in another one. Bye-bye.